Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So I actually just got done filming the full review on this 2021 Lotus Avora GT. If you haven't checked that out, definitely be sure to check it out. I'll leave a link on top of the video right now. But now I'm actually just gonna be doing basically a POV driving video. Basically just strapping the GoPro on my head and taking you guys for a ride in this thing It is absolutely a blast to drive you guys could probably hear it But I have it at you know just running and idling right now because I was literally just driving it And also I do want to give a quick shout out to Lotus of North Jersey if you are in the market for a Lotus or you like this specific spec or anything, I'll leave a link to the listing for this specific uh, Lotus Avora GT, as well as their website down below. All right guys, so now you can see, obviously the interior in this thing is really, really awesome. I don't really like the infotainment system. Uh, it seems a little bit outdated, um, but besides that, I mean, this interior is just great with all the Alcantara, Al Alcantara and leather. My bad, it's kind of a tongue twister. Um, but <clears throat> I do have it in sport mode too, so that automatically opens up the exhaust. And even though it is extremely hot out today, I am going to roll down the windows for you guys so you can get more of the engine noise. And also I do apologize if the camera moves throughout the video. I feel like a lot of these uh, POV driving videos that I do, I won't even realize it and then next thing you know the camera's at an entirely different angle by the end of the video. So again, I do apologize in advance if that does happen. Especially with something like this because the overall cockpit, everything's so tiny in here. And also, I mean, I find this kind of funny, but the kind of pretty much useless sun visor does tend to pop off from time to time. And another thing that I don't really like that much, but I've kind of gotten used to, is the way that the seat is positioned. Obviously, this is a carbon back seat. I can move it, like slide it back and forth up there, but I can't really adjust the pitch, and it's positioned a little bit uh, too high for me personally. I would much rather have it like just a tad bit lower. But again, hopefully this doesn't, you know, mess up the footage at all. So obviously, as you guys can tell, this thing <laughs> absolutely tears up the corners. And honestly, I don't even think I was pushing it as hard as it can go. But now getting onto the highway. is a blast to drive it's definitely not um it's honestly not the you know the fastest car i've driven 
Uh, but this thing is just so, so damn awesome to drive. I mean, especially considering like you're so low to the ground, the car's so tiny. I mean, me personally, I love tiny cars. Uh, you can give me a stock Miata, making stock power, and I'll have fun all day with that thing. But the way that this thing is made with the power that it's making, uh, it, it's just, it's such a blast to drive. And again, I'm not really pushing it to its limits. I mean, it's a brand new car. I may be shifting right around 6,000 RPMs. I know the red line's right at like 6,800, I believe, or 7,000, um, but yeah, I'm not even, you know, going all out with it and it's still just, it's just phenomenal to drive. And if you do more research on this car, a lot of car reviewers and, you know, car magazines or publishers or whatever, always talk about the manual of Aura GTs. And now I know why. Uh, when I first kind of took this car out from the uh, dealership, they had a couple, I think they had an automatic, um, but I, I wanted to do a manual one and I do not <laughs> regret it at all. I mean, this, this gearbox is amazing. The throw on the shifts is extremely short. And considering that the wheelbase is like right over a hundred inches on this car, I mean, it just handles so damn well. Now this is the one problem that I really, really hate with mid-engine cars. The visibility is terrible. Plus with this car, this side mirror is kind of blocked by that pillar. So obviously you could probably imagine that coming out in a scenario like that, is uh, pretty nerve wracking, especially for me, considering you know this is <laughs> the dealership's car. Um, but that is one thing to definitely consider if you're in the market for one of these. Also, if you look in the rear view mirror, uh, you'll see nothing but engine, which I mean, at the end of the day, that's that wouldn't be a deal breaker for me if I was in the market for one of these, but it is something to keep in mind. It's not like your, you know, your traditional front engine vehicle where you have a nice, you know, large rear windshield. for you guys so you get more of the engine noise but it is just so so hot out today and for the most part too I'm getting no temperature issues at all if anything it, it, this car is actually a little bit quirky because when you first start it up uh, you kind of have to like let it sit for 10 minutes or whatever because it actually there actually is a light that comes on and tells you hey you know it's not up to temp I'm pretty sure it'll beep too if you start driving. I'm not entirely sure though. Let me know down in the comments below. But again, this car is definitely a driver's car. I would love to take one of these to, the, to a track, to a closed course where you can really just like thrash it around. Because you can tell that a car like this is designed to do that. Also, one thing, since I'm just pulling a K-turn right here, I don't even know if I'm gonna put this in the video, but uh, to put it in reverse, you do just lift it up like that, and then it goes right in reverse. Gives you a backup cam, which is actually very, very useful, considering that there's you know no visibility out the rear view mirror.
also one thing that I didn't mention in the review, but I'll just mention right now, the uh, brakes are absolutely phenomenal with this car as well. Uh, you can tell like the drilled rotors with the bigger brakes does come standard. I do know that this specific spec does have yellow calipers, which I think does go very well with the uh, kind of like yellow stripes as well as the Lotus logo. But it's not like Lotus is selling like a brake, big brake kit as like a premium option or anything like that. All that just comes standard, which is another thing that I really, really think that Lotus did very well with this car. Ooh. Oh, this thing flies. Guys, <laughs> like always, thank you for all the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one.